these are five modern Spider-Man books that you need to get before they really skyrocket in price. Want to know what they are? Stick around. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get 10% off your first submission by using the code WELOVECOMICS10% on your order form. Link in description. Hello comic book fans, this is Chris and this is my channel We Love Comics. And today I'm going to show you five amazing Spider-Man books that you really should have at least one of. Especially because of the movies that are coming out and potential of these books. So, if there's ones that I miss or you think that should be added, please leave it in the comments section. So these are basically modern books, but most of them are Copper Age. But, I mean, I still consider that pretty much modern these days. But these are books that are on the rise, but still affordable. And I think they have so much more potential to grow based on upcoming movies. So if you're interested in this kind of video, well, let's just show you the first one. This is a book that... I would recommend trying to get ungraded because you'll get it a lot cheaper. This book has been on the rise. This is Amazing Spider-Man 361. Uh, this is one of the books that I have had since I was a kid. And back in like 2015, I sent this to CGC and it came back a 9.6, which I was really happy about. And that was before I knew about pressing. So um, actually, now that I see it, that little spot there, even a pressing would keep it from ever getting a 9.8. So I'm fine with a 9.6. But this is the uh, first full appearance of Carnage. Now, I don't know if it's been confirmed yet, but there have been rumors that the new Venom movie will have Carnage in it. So that has definitely brought a lot of speculators to this book. Now, I read this book as a kid and absolutely loved this storyline. And uh, it's a Mark Bagley cover. And it's just a beautiful cover to look at. And... This is a character that has a lot of staying power. So, honestly, people should have gotten this book years ago, but especially if you're new, uh, this is a book you can add raw. You could probably still get it for about $50 if you look. I wouldn't spend more than that unless they pretty much guarantee it's a 9.8. A graded book will be anywhere from about 125 to 250 depending on the grade. Again, I would take my chances on buying a raw book and having it graded yourself, like I did with this one. But I paid a total of $1.25 for this book because I got it the day it came out back in the days. It's good to be old sometimes. All right, this is one that I bought a few years ago. I didn't get this the day it came out, unfortunately. But this is Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number 8. Now, this is the origin of the alien symbiote that eventually becomes Venom. So this is another book that I think is still desired. And uh, this is one that I bought on eBay. I don't remember the price because I didn't write it down at the time, but I think I paid about 125 I think I bought it again back in 2015. This one was signed by Mike Zeck. Absolutely love his handwriting. But with not only the symbiote from Venom being important. I really believe in you know phase four of the Marvel Universe, especially if they get back the rights of X-Men and Fantastic Four, I think Secret Wars will be a movie that will eventually happen. If it does, this book is going to double from what the price is already now. So this is a book that still has plenty of room to grow. So this book, you probably, again, I would recommend getting it raw unless you find a super deal online that has one graded. But this was a CGC 9.8. And it shows, just to show you something, because this is a CGC 9.8. But as you can see, look at the bottom here and see there's kind of a miswrap. So it shows that even with a miswrap, it could still get a 9.8. I thoroughly don't agree with that, but I've seen that on several videos where um, you'll still get a 9.8, so they don't factor that in. I guess that's one of the minor defects that keeps it from being a 9.9 .9 or a 10.0. But again, great book to own. Raw, you could probably, again, find this book for around $50. 
I wouldn't spend any more than that for a raw copy unless, again, they can say it's pretty much a near mint book. All right. Speaking along those same lines, this is absolutely a must-have comic if you do not already own it. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 252. Um, it is tied with Marvel Team-Up 141, so I'll use that one also as an honorable mention. Uh, it's not as desirable, but the good thing is you can get it cheap, so I could recommend that one as well. But this is the first appearance of the black costume. And it also has a cover swipe of Amazing Fantasy 15, so it's definitely one of those, you know, iconic covers. So again, it's another one that's just beautiful to look at. Um, you could probably get this book for about the $50, $60 range raw. Again, this is another book that I would recommend buying raw. Because these are pretty much modern books, even though these are mostly Copper Age. There's still newer books out there, so you're going to get a lot of them in higher condition than you would a Golden or Silver Age book. Because around the Copper Age time is when people really started discovering the collectability of comics. So more people started to protect them. So take the chance with buying a raw grade. You'll get it for much cheaper. Have it slabbed, you know, because you can always press them and dry clean them and maybe end up with a great book. This is a 9.8. I didn't buy this one raw. I bought this on eBay again back in 2015. Paid about $150 for this book. Okay, this one I absolutely recommend you get. Now, this is not a cheap book, but it is definitely not out of reach. This is Ultimate Fallout 4. Um, I bought this one raw on eBay, I think, 2016, somewhere around there. And um, this was signed by Sarah Pacelli. Now, this is the 1 in 25 variant of Ultimate Fallout 4. This is the first appearance of Miles Morales. Very key book. I sent this in to CBCS, and again, this is before I knew about pressings and dry cleanings. It came out a 9.0, but I think I paid like $200 for this book, and that's because it was signed, and I knew the signature looked valid because I did some research on already graded books to match the signature, so I took the chance on it, and it came back authentic. But um, the regular version, I was telling people for years to get when it was like $15. I have like 10 to 12 copies of the regular version. One of them I sent in to get graded years ago, and I can't, think it came back at 9.4. Those are a little bit harder because they're bagged issues, and a lot of times the back of the book gets like an indent from the lip of the bag. So a pressing can usually get that out, but... Nowadays, the raw book of the regular one will cost you about $25 to $35, still a great price. This book raw is going to cost you around $200. Now, if you can get it for under $200, snatch it up because it's just a matter of time, especially with, um, let's just say, the Hollywood's point of view of characters these days. It's just a matter of time before Miles Morales gets his first real appearance in a movie. Now, he is going to be in a cartoon movie. That's going to be the start, but it'll be just a matter of time before he's in a live action. I mean, in the first movie, uh, the first Spider-Man Marvel movie, they already mentioned him out there because Donald Glover plays his uncle. So they at least name dropped that he lives in this universe. So I think it's just a matter of time. And what will happen is most people will wait until the announcement, if it happens. Obviously, there's no guarantees. But at that point, this $200 book will be about a five dollars or $600 book. So if you could save up for this book, if you don't have the money right away, I highly recommend it. I have been stressing this. People that have been watching my channel for years know that I've been talking about this comic for years. So... Like I said, I have about 10 or 12 copies of this book just waiting for that to happen. And the funny part is, like, <laughs> I, I think once it comes popular, I wouldn't even sell them then either. I just, as you could see, and this is just some of my collection. These are all long boxes. This is just a few that I have right here in front of me. That's not including the multiple boxes of graded comics, the other boxes that are up in my attic and the ones that are in my storage facility. I mean, I, I would probably say I have 
40,000 comics. But this is definitely a book to get graded. This is now going to cost you probably four or 500. So I would, again, try and take my chances on a raw book because that being a modern book, chances are it's going to be pretty high grade. All right, and last but not least... This book has definitely been on the rise. I was fortunate enough to get like four or five copies of this way back. Um, two of them I bought the day it came out. This is one of them. This is Amazing Spider-Man 300. Obviously, most people know that. I mean, this is one of the more, you know, copied covers of modern books out there that I can recall. Now, this is the first full appearance of Venom. So an honorable mention will also be 299. Because Amazing Spider-Man 299 is his first appearance, but it's a cameo. But this, you know, because of the fact that they show him on the cover, well, that, that's not Venom, obviously. That's Spider-Man. If you want the first cover appearance of Venom, that's Amazing Spider-Man 316. And that one's going up in price as well. But this is, the, like I said, the first ap full appearance of an origin of Venom and Eddie... Um, and well, Eddie Brock, who plays Venom. Uh, it's the last black costume as well for Spider-Man, because obviously Eddie Brock takes it over. And this book, now raw, if you can find it for under $300, get it. Now, when I bought these, I was paying, like this one, I bought the day it came out. I bought two copies. This one, which I got signed back in, um, what year? I think it was 91. I went to the New York Comic Con and I got this one and Amazing Spider Man 298 signed by Todd McFarlane. I sent it into CBCS back in like 2015 and it came back a 9.0 with a verified signature of Todd McFarlane. But even though this book is expensive now, I really think it's going to have so much more room to grow. Because trust me when I say. When this book came out, it was fairly popular because it was the 300th issue, and that was pretty big at the time. People loved the cover. Um, when they read 299, they were interested in this supposed new character and see where it went. And Venom became pretty popular. But then it kind of leveled out for a while, and no one really cared about this book. I mean, literally 10 years ago, you could have bought this book for probably under $50. So sometimes it is all about timing, but what happens is most people wait until the last minute. So unfortunately, if you wait until the last minute, you're going to spend more money. But I still think this comic still has potential to, continued, to continue going in an upward direction. So it's going to cost you a little bit, but like they say in investments, sometimes you got to spend money to make money. So I would be careful about this one raw, because I've seen books that people claim to be near mint mint end up grading a 9.0. Now, obviously, this book I've had since I was a kid. I paid a whole dollar fifty for this book. So to me, it didn't matter what the grade was because I wanted the signature verified. So a 9.0, considering I paid a dollar fifty for this, and then whatever the cost was to make a trip into New York back in 1991. Maybe, I think, maybe a total of $20 back and forth with the train ride. Uh, for me, this was a no-brainer. Um, if you have the money, get a graded book. But a 9.8, you're talking around twenty-two dollars to $2,500, even higher. I know there's a 9.9 .9 out there. Good luck getting that one. I mean, you're talking fourteen grand. But, I mean, even if you can only afford a 9.0, graded, probably going to still cost you about... 550 to 700 dollars but like i said it's it's worth the investment in this book now you may have to sit on it for about five to ten years i mean i've had this book since 1988 and i remember i, ha I had a story about this where um probably about 10 years ago when i was looking to get some cash i was thinking of i had a yard sale and i was going to sell this book now it was signed it wasn't graded, obviously, at that time. And I put it on on sale for $25 on the yard sale. Nobody bought it. So in hindsight, I'm glad no one did. But somebody could have owned this book, assigned Todd McFarland, Amazing Spider-Man 300 for $25, and there were no takers. Now, 
if I sold it for 250 people would jump on it. So this is a book I've held on to. I'm going to continue to hold on to for a very long time. But this is a book, get it if you can. If you can only afford a lower grade, one of the things I always say is low grade is better than no grade. But even sometimes with lower grades, you could still make a good turnaround if you want to flip a book. Because, I mean, if you spend $100 on a book, even in low grade, and it's a very desirable book, well, somebody may not be able to afford a $5,000 book, maybe not even a $500 book. But if yours ends up selling for $250, you've made a nice profit. So it's not always about the highest grade. Sometimes it's about the most profitability. And sometimes you can actually get more profit from a lower grade book. Because like, for example, that 9.9, .9, that's going to probably sell on eBay for around between thirteen and 15000 How many of you honestly would be able to afford that? And to be honest, I would rather, if I had $15,000, I would rather buy Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, than a 9.9 .9 version of this comic that's all over the place. So most people, even though that is a lot of money, most people are not going to bid on that. And that's why you'll see some of the more expensive books on eBay constantly being relisted, and they've been there for years. Because there's not many people that can afford those. And again, like I said, with that kind of money, they're probably going to buy something, you know, that has a lot more potential. Because, like, I mean, put this in the comments section. If, especially if you're watching this far, I'll know by watching the comments. If you had $15 to spend, would you spend it on a 9.9 .9 Amazing Spider-Man 300? Or would you buy, let's say, a 1.0 of Amazing Fantasy 15? Let's just assume both of those are $15,000. Which would you buy? For me, it's a no-brainer. I would buy Amazing Fantasy 15, first appearance of Spider-Man. So it shows that certain books, if it's too expensive, it's just going to be out of the reach of people. And even though you think you can make a lot of money, it doesn't matter what you try and sell something for. It's what people are willing to buy it for that really determines price and value of a comic. So... Hopefully you enjoyed this little run of comics of Amazing Spider-Man. Absolutely is my favorite character. Loved him since I was a child. Uh, Miles Morales has definitely grown on me. I love the potential of this character. Um, these are books, not this particular one, but I have had these books since I was a kid. Love reading this. I loved reading that. If you haven't read The Secret Wars, please do. I mean, this is a book, not this one. But um, I have another copy that I bought back in the 80s when I was a kid, well, teenager, and loved reading them. Again, this one, another great read. So if you haven't had the opportunity to read them, check them out. And that's why I always recommend buy multiple copies because you can always buy, like this one, you could find one that maybe is torn to pieces or has water damage and somebody's selling it for like 15 bucks. You can use that as the reader copy. And then buy another one that could be a 9.4, 9.8, whatever, and leave that one alone so you can keep it in the most pristine condition. So that's why sometimes it is advantageous to get multiple copies so you can have one as a reader. Or you can look online. I'm sure somebody out there has, the, uh, has a video that lets you read certain books. Or you could make your own. That'd be a good way to make a video. So that's it. Hopefully you appreciated this. If you do, thumbs up are always appreciated. Hitting the share button also gets other people out there to see these kind of videos. Leave in the comment section if there's other Amazing Spider-Man video, uh, videos, books that you would recommend. And again, I'm saying like Copper Age to Modern Age. And um, if you want to hit subscribe, please do. So thanks for watching. And don't forget, it's not you, it's not I, it's We Love Comics. Spider-Man would say hello, but he's all tied up. Ah.